Hey everybody, it's Master Gallengeist here, bringing you my review for the latest episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. All Roads Lead, and this wasn't as bad as the previous episode, but it still had issues to me, mainly with editing and how we were flip-flopping throughout the whole episode. Um, it's mainly because of yo-yos and Talbot's parts. Now, granted, yo-yos could have just been done better. That one, I just was, okay, I understand what you're trying to do, but we've already been told that her arms aren't able to withstand the super speeds that she's doing, and it's causing her intense pain. I get that. I don't know why we're so focusing on that at the moment. There's other kind of more pressing issues. Talbot's, even though it goes back to the old Hydra comply kind of thing, I don't really understand what its whole main purpose was for the whole narrative and for Talbot's character. I understand it's to more show how much strain and duress he has taken under Hydra, but I think they've already done enough of a job on that. So, that was just kind of the main issues with those. Otherwise, Daisy's arcs and everything with May and all them going off towards the Hydra base. Like, okay, so let's get into the kind of main parts as we were. We got Talbot and we find out, we found out in the previous episode that he is under Hydra compliance. So we see him going through the base and we're going, okay, what are his orders? So we see him looking around, we see him find Robin's like, okay, we'll see that. He pretty much pushes pause on it. Matt kind of comes up and tries to be Max. Say, hey, I know you've been through a lot of stuff, but I kind of want to help you, man. Is there anything that you need? He's like, no, no, no. No, we're good. We're good. And still acts kind of crazy, Talbot, but walks on his way. So since everybody kind of goes on found their own thing, he's just pretty much by himself and everything. Goes in, looks at all the stuff that Robin's been drawing, and Robin's mother comes in with Robin and... I'm thinking, oh god, this is where Robin's mother dies. But that's not the case. He's pretty much trying to get them to come with him. They don't comply. And he pretty much chokes out the mother. I'm like, oh god, she's dead. But of course, he's taken Robin and they're trying to get out. Of course, at this point, Coulson and Mac have found the frozen camera feed. And they go and they see that he's trying to get in the hangar. And... He takes Robin hostage and pretty much like, I gotta comply, I gotta comply, and I've mean, gotta finish the mission and everything. And, of course, Matt kind of goes off because Coulson wants him focused on him and everything. They do get, because Talbot does get Robin to get away from him. She, he, he's talked kind of into this kind of loop thing. They let Robin go. Of course, Matt gets Robin out of there and, of course, Talbot's kind of freaked out and gets ready to kill himself, but Coulson goes, no. He uses the comply kind of thing to get him to train the gun on him, but of course Matt comes back where they ice her, and they ice Talon. Okay? I understand the journey we came here, but we were kind of already here, so why do we need to go this route? That's... I just don't see where it completely adds to either Talbot or what's going on. I understand it's like, oh, Hale did another kind of thing. Fine. Okay. It was just, alright, so, the main part that we get into is trying to figure out what's going on, and with Ruby, and Simmons, and Fitz, and Strucker. They need to find that out, so Daisy and May decide to go off to the Hydra base, because they've got the coordinates and all that. Deke, of course, had talked with Mac and Coulson, and... They let him know that they know about Daisy, and that calls him like, dang, I called that, like, right off there. And he's like, um, no, you guys are crazy and everything. She totally hates me and everything. I'm like, yeah, she don't like you. I'm like, well, maybe I give her a lemon or something, and goes on to this spiel about how if you like someone in the future, you give them a lemon. I'm like, yeah, do that, do that. I love how Colson and Mac are just like, screw it. These are the best, this is the kind of best parts that we see. We see multiple points of character development that we've seen previously. We see Mac and Coulson's relationship just 
completely banging off of each other. We see D just trying to explain certain things, and he's just... I know we're probably going to have him gone after this, but he's a really interesting, cool character. I think it... I think why I like him so much is he brings that kind of optimism back that we've had that was like in the beginning of the S.H.I.E.L.D. like when the show began and where we were in the Marvel Universe, which is kind of weird since he came from a really crappy post-apocalyptic world, but, well, he's in our time, which is a lot better. He's like, there's ice cream and cheeseburgers and beer. I'm good, boy! <laughs> and this even, all right, I'm going to do the lemon thing. I kind of hope we get a callback where he does that in the next episode, because that's just too good. We saw him actually get the lemon, and they're just looking at him like, you dumbass. <laughs> it's just so good. So, of course, we've seen Daisy doing her later thing, designating, and Coulson wants to know where he wants her, or she wants him to be. And she's like, no, I'm going out and everything, and I'm like, okay. Everybody was berating Coulson, for being a stupid leader and making stupid suicidal decisions. And yet, Daisy does the same thing. Now, okay, she's going with May, and they're the most badass people at the moment, so take that with you will. Still a stupid maneuver to take your leader and have them as the waiting thing and just go through. Now, granted, I understand other shows do it, but <laughs> usually they've got a more effective chain of command because... Daisy's chain of command would be uh, Coulson piggybacking and quarterbacking, and he's dying. That's about it. The only other one second that would be good would be the one going with her. Mac, of course, is good, but he never really kind of wants that responsibility. Fitz and Simmons are currently in a hostage situation, and Yo-Yo is not doing good either and outside... We, they need help. They need organizational help. I'm sorry, just thinking about it, I'm like, God. <laughs> I'm kind of comparing it to as the Star Trek kind of model where you've got an away team, but you usually have your commander either go or your commander on board, and you've got another commander that can take over in case you kind of need a little bit more of that. They're loose and everything, but we'll see. They kind of go, they go, they get into the Hydra place, which... We'd gotten a little bit on there that Hale had seen what is going on with Creel, and they finally learn about Franklin Hall and Ian Quinn are inside the Gravitonium, and they're fucking with his head, and he actually turns himself into, like, the wall and starts beating his head against the wall, and Hale's like, I fucked up. Miscalculation. Fucked. So, <laughs> when Daisy and uh, May come in, and they have a great kick-ass fight scene. I mean, just showing them off because May said that she needed to blow off steam. Coulson even tried to talk to her about the previous thing where she said that she loved them and said, we said all we need to say. Kind of moved along. She was just whooping wholesale ass. This was good fight scene. This was great court out. Yes. And then Hale comes in and was like, I surrender. We need to stop Ruby and the Gravitonium and all that. So then we get back and it gets into where we're kind of meeting up. We pretty much see Strucker and Ruby. It's really kind of stupid because I... Ruby just has no kind of gravitas, and they are not really consistent on who they want her to be as a character. So she's doing the whole... where she's throwing her chakra at uh, uh, Simmons, and of course Fitz is getting freaked out, and of course they try to screw up the machine, and they have it reversed. The Strucker's like, this is reversed! She's like, I start cutting off I start cutting off things next time. And I'm going, yeah, you cut off Yo-Yo's arms. But what you going to do? You need them to fix the machine. You need both of them to fix the machine. They have the leverage over you. <laughs> if you harm them, they can't do it. If you harm them, you can't do it. I'm just like... <sighs> And it also doesn't help with the whole time traveling thing. I just wish that it had been done. This is completely dragged out to a point where I'm going, there's nothing going to happen to him. Unless they've changed everything, nothing's going to happen to him. So they're pretty much getting everything together. Strucker was able to reprogram the robots, even though Ivanov was killed. Well, not, he's not killed. His head's still somewhere. 
And Yo-Yo is still trying to figure out what to do with their arms. But, of course, they get together with Hale. They plan out everything. And they get down into the base. And they don't get there in enough time because Ruby starts doing the whole Gravitonium thing. And... They only get to like 8% before she starts freaking out, which I kind of actually loved. I'm like, pretty much everybody and their mother was telling you not to do this. Even Fitz and Simmons towards the end were like, listen, we don't know how to get the gravitomy, gravitonium in there. So, good luck. But of course it goes in and she's like, ha ha ha, I'm going to be the destroyer of worlds. And I'm going, <laughs> it's really bad when you get to a character. I'm like, get in there. I want you to blow up or something. I don't care if this leads to the apocalypse scenario. I want you dead in the worst way possible, not because you're, like, the evilest most character, not because you hurt Yo-Yo or anything. I just don't like you. So, she starts freaking out, and Strucker's like, get her out of there, get her out, fine, fine, we'll do it. That, of course, when everybody gets in, and she starts floating out. And at first, she tries to go and kind of caress Strucker, but... <laughs> I'm sorry. I know it's supposed to be emotional. She accidentally fucking crushes his head. <laughs> but it was just so funny to me because of how it looked. I'm like, oh, you cooked canned his ass. It was... I didn't care about him, and I didn't care about her, but when I just saw this moment, it was just so hilarious to me for some reason. I'm like, of course this will happen. She's freaking out and everything. She's like, they're screaming in my head. I'm like, yeah? You saw what it did to Kryu? Nobody's gonna listen to the dude that fucking touched the thing. But okay, okay. We've now gone in. And, of course, they get Fitz and Simmons out. They get out. And Hale and Daisy are trying to talk her down. Of course, she still has to be like, now I can crush you, Daisy. But, of course, Hale is trying her best to get her down and everything. But, of course, that's when Yo-Yo comes in. And she sees everything that's going on, and she decides to take matters into her own hands again, and uh, uses the chakram and cuts through these throat. I don't mind that this was her death, because I'm like, we're done with her. Now I'm like, stupid yo-yo, look what you've done, fool. Because we saw a gravitonium explosion that was only 8%. I'm like, okay, I guess that didn't do much. It knocked out Hale, knocked out Daisy. Um... Hale, of course, is pissed off. But everybody comes in, like, Hale's gone and all that. They just kind of bug out. You know, you think she's saved the world and everything. And I'm like, well, get back to the base. And let's see if Deke's still there. Because if Deke's still there, that's your yardstick. You didn't do it right. <laughs> so we get to the end of the episode. And we see that Hale has gone back to the Confederacy overlords to Quovas. And tells him about the gravitonium, which he interestingly enough says that is his gravitonium. And gives them the location of the shield base, so that's kind of where it's going to be taking the next episode. So, we'll have this, I just want this to be resolved. I mean, this wasn't as boring as the last episode, but it was editing and stuff that I didn't, it's crazy, it's stuff that I didn't really have that much investment in. And it's mainly because of the whole time travel story arc. They're either going to be safe or they're not going to be safe. And it's, I'm leaning towards, this is just going along the same routes as the whole time travel thing. If Deke disappears or something, then I'm like, okay, I've got a measuring stick. We're in, back in uncharted territories. Any kind of thing can kind of happen. But now I'm like, okay, either this is going to be towards the same future or it's going to be resolved in such a way that it's all kind of like written out or whatnot. So I just want this time travel storyline to be over with. Even though I kind of like Hale as a character, I kind of wish it had been some kind of other organization, like maybe AIM or something, or anything else. But we'll have to see how this works out. So those are my opinions on the episode. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me. Also, like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.